It's kind of hard to talk about RTS without talking about Total Annihilation. It made a real impact when it was released and it still resonates today in more modern titles like Supreme Commander and Beyond All Reason. But what about its creator? Hi, I'm Candyvan, and on today's episode of Know Your Studio we're going to take a look at Cave Dog Entertainment, where they came from and why they're not around anymore. Before we start with Cave Dog we must first mention Humongous Entertainment. Back in the early 90s Humongous were in the business of making games for children, something they were reasonably successful at. It was a company run by Ron Gilbert and Shelley Day, two ex-LucasArts employees. You could probably describe Ron as an industry giant. He'd been responsible for the Scum Engine and some real classic games like Day of the Tentacle and the Monkey Island series. He's been responsible for loads of games over the years including the last Monkey Island game that came out in 2022. Shelley, well Shelley took a bit of a different path and instead decided to defraud a bank out of one and a half million dollars and ended up serving three years in prison. I guess that's one way to get your dream home. Anyway, back in its heyday Humongous felt it was time to diversify and make some games aimed at an older audience. They decided it was probably better to do this under a different name, so in 1995 they set up a sister company and Cave Dog Entertainment was born. Chris Taylor was brought in as the project lead. He'd loved June too, and he'd driven to a tech show in Las Vegas to see Westwood's Command and Conquer on display. He was so impressed with the game that he called up Ron and Shelley and told them that he was going to start his own game studio. Ron and Shelley managed to persuade Chris to come and work for them instead, and that's how he ended up leading the team at Cave Dog. The following year was very eventful. First Humongous was purchased by GT Games. Then, fellow Washington based developers Squaresoft closed their offices providing Cave Dog an ample supply of talent. One of those was Jeremy Soule who I think is one of the best composers in the gaming industry full stop. With all of the right people in all of the right places, Cave Dog would release Total Annihilation in September 1997. You would think that a game of this magnitude would have solidified Cave Dog's position as one of the heavyweights of RTS gaming, but unfortunately it was not to be. To its credit, Cave Dog did provide excellent support for their game, releasing two expansion packs in the following year and an online service that allowed players to download new units and maps which was pretty rare for the late 90s. They also started work on a number of other titles that looked promising on the outset but ultimately never resulted in any additional income. To make matters worse, both of their parents, Humongous Games and GT Interactive were starting to struggle financially. Cave Dog would have one more roll of the dice in 1999 with the release of Total Annihilation Kingdoms, a fantasy game built on an evolution of the TA engine. It wasn't a bad game, but it wasn't a great game either, and it would never come close to reaching the success or popularity of its predecessor. It was maintained for a short while and an expansion was released a year later, but it wasn't quite enough to save Cave Dog and it definitely wasn't enough to save GT. In the end, GT Interactive was purchased by Infograms in the year 2000, who proceeded to gut the organisation in a vain attempt to make it profitable. Cave Dog was cut loose and declared bankruptcy and Humongous Entertainment would remain focused on children's games until it was shut down a few years later. I think Cave Dog is probably a victim of circumstance just as much as anything else. They weren't a big studio and with only 20 employees involved in the creation of TA it's hard to accuse them of bloat or overspending. Chris Taylor had departed after the release of TA to form his own company which was always his dream and when you've got such a small team losing a key individual can have a serious impact. What Cave Dog needed to do was recruit a new lead with the same level of vision, dedication and drive that Chris had brought to the first project but this never happened. I can only guess but I think the financial struggles of Humongous and GT Interactive seriously limited their enthusiasm to push things forward in the direction that it needed to go. In the end, I think the legacy that Cave Dog left behind towers above their short lifespan. Not only is Total Annihilation fondly remembered today, it's inspired at least five community projects as well as the aforementioned Supreme Commander, Planetary Annihilation and Industrial Annihilation which I think should be on Steam Early Access sometime later this year. Not only that, the people who were involved with Cave Dog such as Chris Taylor, Ron Gilbert, Jeremy Soule, Clayton Claus Lerick and many others have credits all over the gaming industry and are still influencing the games that we play today. So that's Cave Dog, a bit of a flash in the pan but you have to admit it was one hell of a bright one while it lasted. <laughs>